It seems as though the red pill guys have absolutely made it to Love is Blind. Case, case in point, Matthew, I'm sorry, I have this new uh, software update on the app I'm recording this on, and I don't know how to get the regular green screen, so you're going to get this annoying crap. But this dude, okay, I'm going to use this one instead. Oh, no, it's doing both hands. Oh, my God, this is so annoying. This dude right here, Matthew, is terrifying. Like, I would argue just as terrifying as this dude. This dude, remember how they screwed her over? But, oh, my God, this is so annoying. I'm so sorry. That guy was um, apparently um, abusive, verbally, also, like, scary, uh, uh, homeless. Uh, unemployed, an addict, like, all kinds of things, all kinds of things that are scary. And they put him with a woman as a partner, as someone to marry. But you know what I'm starting to realize before I dig into Matthew and him being like a possible uh, school schmooter, um, school pew pewer? Like, the, what I want to say to start out of the gate with is this man is actually the perfect example of what dating is like. This show is the perfect example of what dating is like, honestly, and why women don't want to date men. Y'all are scary as hell. And all of y'all need to be going to therapy, although I know that therapy can't help some of y'all. You'll just weaponize it against the women you date, which some of them are already doing. And it doesn't matter if you haven't seen the show. I actually hope you didn't. I hope you didn't lose the eight hours or however many hours of your life that I just lost watching this show, not once, but twice, so I could take photos and do this video. Um, which is why it's taking me so long to talk about it, honestly. But I can't not talk about it, because it literally, it hits like everything that I talk about in terms of dating men. So many of the men on this show are beyond help. Like, I can't believe that, honestly, and I've said this before, women should absolutely, and that's why that, that, that lawsuit that that woman who brought up against the, that bald dude I just showed the picture of, I hope she wins. Maybe it's been settled. I don't know. But she brought up a lawsuit suing them because they are literally, it's, this is reckless endangerment. And I'm, I talked about this with Gary from The Golden Bachelor too. They literally put another hobo schedule gold digger out there. And of course he went with the money, the woman with all the money. The, the, the pick me who's like, yeah, like, yeah, you know, I love you. Like always being like, oh. Uh, anyway, I have nothing against her, but she was way too desperate and he could sense it. And then as soon as he found out she had money, he was like, you! And toyed with all those other women. So that is actually a very good example of what it's like dating when you're older. Doesn't matter how old, you never age out of gold digging, hobo, schedule. Lazy men who are here to exploit women. But it, you know, whether you're in your 20s on Love is Blind or your 60s and 70s on The Bachelor, um, these men, like, it's, this is really accurate. This is so accurate. That's why I watch this is because these are perfect examples. I think these dating shows should be held uh, financially responsible, maybe even legally responsible, like for, for putting these women in danger, okay? Because I'm sorry, either they are not doing a good vetting process or they are purposely, which is what I'd be more willing to guess, purposely putting these terrifying men. Did you look at his, his social media account? Like, because let me tell you how awful Matthew is. And before we go any farther, anyone who's new here, I actually was on a reality TV show very briefly for National Geographic. It was about uh, survival instinct in the brain. So it had nothing to do with love or drama or any of that stuff. And just in that experience alone, what I realized is this is all very scripted and that they can literally make the worst person, which is one of the people who was on that show, the worst person, everyone... All of us hated him. The, the, the crew hated him. And as someone who worked in the film industry on, on crew for many years, I'm not usually in front of a camera. I, I used to be behind the camera. I'm sitting on the prop truck talking with them and everybody hates this man. And yet the editing makes him look like a hero and a great guy. And when people who watched the episode, when it came out years ago, they're like, they hated the guy who was like, okay, and like, not so bad. And they loved this douchebag. So just saying that right now, that we, the editing, the way they edit, the way they plant seeds, if you've never, and I also watch the show Unreal, if you want to see like, kind of exaggerated, but actually not that much so, way that the producers create movie magic on these shows. Do not believe everything you see because they are baiting them, they're lying to them, they're, you know, giving them so much alcohol, they're probably drunk in half these scenes. They are sleep deprived, they have no contact with their family and their friends. 
On top of that, we don't even see like 95.9 or something even more of the actual footage because they're filming all day, every day. I don't, I don't, I, I would never wish this editing job on anybody, but the editors, the producers, the director, man, they are so good. That is why this show is so good. And the way they did Miriam on last season, I'm still, I've made videos on that. I will still never forgive them for that alone. That is the example right there. How dishonest this show is. So, that just gotta get all that out of the way because we're gonna be like, oh my god, don't you know that? This actually is reality. This is reality. Dating men is terrifying, and this show this season has proven it all the more. What we really wanna see again <laughs> is this couple. Cameron and Lauren, season one. I honestly think that's the only reason why people keep watching. Other than watching a woman drink out of the same wine glass as her dog. Like we're, the drama is what keeps us watching. But no one would watch if none of the couples ever, ever, ever worked out. Cameron and Lauren set a, a high bar that I'm not, con I'm not fully convinced anyone has met. Although, this couple, Brett and Tiffany, I loved this couple on the show. And this is the, there's, these are the only two couples that I think have a healthy relationship. Again, that's based on what we were shown. I don't really fully believe any of those other couples are really that great of matches. Because we got two out of it, <laughs> like, you know, we keep watching, hoping that maybe, but literally, uh, like all the other couples in my mind, unless I'm forgetting someone, should never be together. And most of the men on this show, not all, not all. There's some that I'm like, you got your stuff together, right? most of the men on this show and most of the women on this show honestly not all but a lot of the women on the show are so desperate to get married I haven't um unpacked the con patriarchal mind control brainwashing of like just really wanting to be married so bad and being picked and all that stuff a lot of the women on the show i really wish they would stop dating like not, not only not get married any time stop dating please stop dating please 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 go work on yourself more and learn how to date yourself because uh you're scaring me. But this guy right here, like seriously, this is if this guy, Andrew Tate, oh my God, I got to fix this. This is too exhausting. And this little crybaby, I like had a baby. That who's, that's who Matthew is. And um, maybe was raised by like a school schmooter um, uh, stepfather. Like Matthew I am legitimately scared for any woman who ends up with Matthew. And I'm going to show you exactly why. Break it down. Because there's so many things he said that I was like, oh my God. But what he did to Amber and what he did to AD especially, like, unforgivable. This man is a master manipulator. And he's so well. Actually, I'm mad at what both men did to AD. Actually, I'm mad at what the whole cast, not the whole cast, but I'm mad at what a lot of the white ladies, and, and what's his face? Jimmy, who's actually looks like this guy. <laughs> and his little white, that stuff they pulled at the bar, like schmegualizing AD, the most predictable, but disrespectful, like violent kind of way. Schmegualizing a black woman in front of everybody talking about her butt that other person who was like talking about doing the like flicking the, her net like what is wrong with you? anyway well, actually I, I know what's wrong with you. this is nothing new the way that this show and the contestants on this show treat black women let's just say they have a bad record very bad record especially last season let's talk about this season. why matthew is a cautionary tale for what women need to look out for from these nice guys and empathizing with men and dating their potential and believing this whole thing. This man, God, he used women's empathy to win them over. He got, I don't know, I don't even remember him talking to Amber, but the way he played AD was all about manipulating her. Like, it was mind fork. All right, total mind for it. But the way he started, that he could tell that she was empathetic. And he played the, like, dork. Oh, I'm such a mom. Oh, I mean, that, that's the Jordan Peterson man. I swear, every man who hates women falls into the Andrew Tate or Jordan Peterson uh, pipeline. And Matthew is like this weird combination of both of them. Toxically masculine, but thinks he's a dork. 
right? Or plays the victim dork narrative, sensitive guy dork narrative who just is afraid to open up. That's Jordan Peterson right there, baby. Because Bat Matthew is just this guy and this guy in the worst combo ever. I still don't know why they took away my like normal green screen thing. So I found a one that's not as weird as the hand. Bear with me. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> Before we get into the like like red pill, um, sociopathic kind of almost a school schmooter energy of Matthew, I just want to say this is the only person I think I liked. Like, no, okay. If I'd learned more about him, I'd probably hate him too. But this dude, um, which is shocking because I can not in the bodybuilders at all. To me, I'm like, ugh. But like, he likes fresh cut lawn, butterflies, love, uh, like romance movies. Like, how, how is the, this guy? Like, he went home. God. Okay, I'm going to do different videos on the different people, okay? But I'm so disappointed that this is the one who went home, which is the only one who seemed to really truly be there for all the right reasons and doesn't seem to need a ton of therapy or even just a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. And don't worry, a video on this guy is coming who is actually looks a lot like this guy. Anyway, just want to give credit to where I found that. Go follow this creator. I love them. Over on Twitter. So I, uh, I, tiny 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 bit fell for Matthew's crap for just momentarily because I liked the things he was saying to AD he said all the right things y'all I want to you know like I want to be protective you're amazing I'm so lucky like all that crap I don't know whatever Ugh. and now I really hate him for having said all that and being such a phony anyway Right out of the gate, he comes in there with all these questions. And one of the first ones he gives is to, um, like, Jessica or whatever. And, you know, he's like, what do you mean? What do you, you excel at in a relationship? And she says, sorry, that this is so weird looking. My loyalty and devotion to my partner. That is the worst answer. Don't ever say that to men. My loyalty and devotion. That's like saying, no matter what you do, I'm never going to leave you. No matter what you do, the thing I'm best at is sticking around for your BS. Like, th th I was like, <gasps> when she said that, I'm like, no, 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 no. And then when she was like, what about you? He's like, oh, <laughs> what do you mean, me? Like, you're the one, uh, I'm the prize, baby. You're the one I'm interviewing. Like, this dude, I tell you all the time, the thing that I look for most, looked for most when I was dating what, and I learned this through bare, bad experiences, honestly. To me, the foundation of um, patriarchy and um, grape culture is men's entitlements, which is which then leads to their selfishness and all the other crap they do, right? And also they hate themselves. So that's a, that's a bad combo. And if I, if I went on a dating show where we are interviewing each other and this man throws a question at me and then if I bounce it back and he's like, what? I'm supposed to answer that? Like, ugh, you're, like, right there that shows me that this dude thinks he is the prize. He later on went in to say, America is rooting for him. Like, literally, this man is a classic case, like a case study of projection, misogyny, um, entitlement, and literally everything this man accused other people of is what he was doing. And every time he said something like, I really mean this. That means he didn't mean it. I mean, I swear, sometimes it's not what, sometimes the things, that, and Cecilia Regina talks about this all the time, that a lot of times you have to listen carefully to what these men say, and the things that they're saying is something that's actually, like, because they're saying it, that means it's not true. I'm going to give you the worst example ever to prove my point here. My abusive ex, um, Sorry, my head, hat's bothering me. My abusive ex, I remember before I started dating him, and I was just getting to know him, he was like, you know, I never hit women. I would never hit women. And I was like, where did that come from? Like, why would he say that? Isn't that a given? The, 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 the fact that he felt the need to tell me that, as if I, it ever occurred to me that he hit women, I just remember being like, <gasps> like, I remember thinking, well, that seems like a big red flag. Because I've never met any man who actually said that out loud. Because I've never dated a man 
who wanted to unalive me and tried to until him. So pay attention to what these men say. And Matthew is the perfect example of men making bold statements that are literally because they're not true. This is the level of mind fork these guys are into. He asked another woman a question and got bored by her answer and had the audacity to just literally walk out of the room without even telling her he was leaving. That level of disrespect, I, like, this is unbelievable. And this guy went on later to say, America's rooting for me? And that he's an underdog? Like, this man has, like, such, I'm the amazing, and I'm also, like, because I'm so amazing, everything is so unfair. And I'm a perpetual victim. Ugh! He asked another woman a question, you know, pick a number three because he had a whole set of questions because he, does, he doesn't want to actually have a conversation. He wants to make women have to explain themselves, right? So then he asks another woman, okay, question, got my questions. One through 15 or one through 10 or whatever, pick a number. And she's like, mm, 12. And he was like, Ugh, um, that one's already been requested. Can you try something different? <laughs> like, as if... As if, like, like he, this man is, it's, it screams control freak, hates women, everything this man does. And now I want to point out something that is very, very important in terms of red flag. The way this man has tried to trick, well, first of all, a lot of women, they just, they smelled it. They were like, Ugh. immediate, were like, ew, don't talk to me that way. But this guy's shtick is that he's awkward. He doesn't know how to talk about his feelings. He doesn't know how to talk to women. He's really bad at dating. And he can use that to hide behind the fact that he's a mastermind manipulator who hates women and just wants, a, he thinks he deserves a woman. And by that, I mean her body, her free labor, including emotional labor, la, 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 domestic labor, all that stuff, especially her body. Okay. He believes he deserves that. And I promise you, he's been listening to Jordan Peterson. And maybe Andrew Tate too. But he, he, and, and then he's hiding behind the, not even, like, this is like a nice, like, he's try, he's like a mixture of, like, the nice guy. But really, he's the poor me. I'm just a dork. You know, I don't have much dating experience. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay? I'm just a country boy from a town with 600 people. We went and rode our go-karts, and that's, I just don't know how to do this. Two things are happening here. One, by saying that, I'm not even going to show this man. He can't look at his stupid face. Two things, at least two things are happening here. One, it's a ruse so that you don't question his game. You're, you assume that he just doesn't know what he's doing. He's awkward, right? He's, he has no experience with women. He hasn't really dated before. So any of his little fumbles, any of his little mistakes, any of his little insults, it's just he just doesn't know better because he doesn't have experience. I call BS. This man either has no experience but has been studying like the game and like all these player books and crap and Jordan Peterson and stuff or what it might be just as likely, which I would love for someone, for her to, for her or multiple women to be like, I dated that guy and then tell us the tea. But what I believe is that this man has plenty of dating experience because the way he got two women to think they were the only one the way he played on, so I believe he has plenty of dating experience. He has just gotten so good at it. And this is why I say, do not teach men anything on your way out the door. Remember I did that whole uh, video about like no exit interviews. Don't tell them what they did wrong. Don't give them any tips because they will literally use that and, and, and just make it uh, get better at exploiting women. Okay. So First of all, there's that. I believe this man has plenty of experience. He knows what he's doing, and that's why he's so good at it. And one of the best tactics of narcissist abusers, just players, like, like men who don't like women, is weaponizing our empathy. That is how he got AD. She even said she felt protective of him, especially because all the other women were like, ugh, right? Like, everyone was like, ugh, Matthew. And she actually kind of, like... And I love this about her. And this is what I, I hate that men like this. Oh, like it's a good quality to want to see the best in people. To want to give people a chance. To understand that a lot of people, some people are. Especially if they're on the nerd version. If they're on the spectrum. A lot of times they maybe are off and do, you know, have a, a hard time relating. Right? Like people who are empathetic are like, oh, I don't know. I know it, like it may have come off that way. But 
This man is weaponizing that so that women will give him a chance because he's the underdog. He literally told us that. Another thing that Matthew said in his master manipulating game of like, I'm just a dork, but really a superhero, also a victim, and please give me a chance. Like he literally compared himself to Superman. Superman had a cold personality to start off with. And this is his mastermind approach, y'all. Because look at the things that AD said are honestly so accurate in terms of how a lot of women think when we're dating, including myself. I have done this. Besides weaponizing our empathy and feeling sorry for him as a door, we feel special. If this man who's, you know, cold personality on the outside, but really deep down a superhero and the perfect guy for you, if we can access it, then we're special. Like literally this man used all of the most effective manipulative tricks in the book all of them you know genius a dork victim um feel sorry for me empathy i'm just a poor i'm gonna bring it right and also like i am deep and i'm gonna withhold it and then make you feel special for accessing something that is really hard for me to do which is being vulnerable fork that just look at all the things he said Maybe my first interaction isn't my strong suit. I could get better at it. Teach me how. Be patient. Give me a million chances, even if your intuition senses something is off. I'm also really sorry for the green screen. I don't have the normal green screen, so it's either this or the pop-up thing, and this is less annoying. So back to the projection thing. He literally says this to Aiden. I'm certainly not, you know, doing this to become a see less celebrity. See less celebrity. Yes, you are. Like, he, he literally is the only... A guy, at least, it seems to be on here for nothing but that. Like, he's the one who literally talks about the camera and what America is rooting for the underdog. He is there for nothing but fame and hopefully to maybe get a woman who he can torture for a while. I'm telling you, everything they say is projection. I love her response. Well, that's good news. <laughs> I hope you're here for, like, literally the premise of the show. And again, he makes fun of himself for being the king. This self-deprecating humor. I know that I'm giving, I'm telling y'all, like, <laughs> I'm making it sound like men can never make fun of themselves. I just want you to be careful that this self-deprecating thing is this man being like, please, uh, you know, like, I, you know, I, I'm a humble guy. I'm a humble guy. Look, I'm the king of first impressions. I, I love all of her comebacks. Well, you've made a lasting impression. And look at this. I mean, this is just like so awkward for me. It's so awkward for me. I'm a victim. I'm the underdog from a town of 600 people. Like being in a dating pod is probably the scariest thing I've ever done in my life. I don't believe that. This man is literally like, God, he's so good. Oh, this is just so hard. This is why I hate Jordan Peterson because Jordan Peterson has convinced these men that the men who are, who are emotional and vulnerable and all that just really you know, they have a hard time and women are so hard on them. And then any of us who had absent fathers or fathers who just didn't give us a sense of security, maybe they were narcissists or something like that, especially those of us who want to fix men or feel special if a man like chooses us or changes for us because A, we've been taught that and B, the men who were the most important in our lives growing up made us think that we weren't enough. And so if, 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 even if the biggest loser who's just so broken, like Beauty and the Beast, if, if he can see that we're special, then, then, then that is so validated. So this poor, poor guy, this is so scary for him. Please, please applaud him for being there. The underdog showed up. It's like, it's scary for me, but I'm here. He's searching for her to validate him so then he talks about you know i just started seeing a therapist four or five months ago you know just because like i don't know everybody does it i'm like all right whatever this right here is another example of him weaponizing his fear of vulnerability but i'm going to a therapist so don't think that i'm a guy who you know you, who doesn't have potential he's like i usually give her like one word answer i told her like i was going on the show basically and you should have seen her face now, of course, this gets her to laugh. He's telling these stories for a reason. We don't know anything about this man. 
Now, maybe in the pods, because of editing, because we know how reality TV works, maybe he opened up his heart and really told her all about himself. But if you, you will notice, if you haven't already, we don't know anything about this man. He shares nothing. All he does is gas her up and tell her all the things that he knows that she's been dying to hear from someone. Dying to hear from someone. And he uses the like, um... I'm, I'm afraid of being vulnerable. I'm bad at this. So that he can breadcrumb her with emotional vulnerability. Give her just enough to make her think he's being vulnerable, but he's not. He's not. I, I would be willing to bet that this story isn't even true. <laughs> of course, AD, and they're in the South right now, okay? She's from Boston. And, you know, is a city girl. She says herself, I've never been on a farm or in dirt like opposite but I feel like you're a great guy okay this is where I really wish she had kind of held her cards close to her chest but I understand why she's doing this because he's already like laid the the foundation for her to feel the the need to validate him and 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 say nice things about him because all the other girls hate him or so she thinks little does she know he's playing another girl at the same time she feels this need and this is why a lot of us are raised to be like so nurturing and validating and, 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 you know, just pour into these men things that we think they need to hear, especially if they lead with this BS story that they're just, you know, the, the underdog, the Superman who just hasn't opened his shirt yet. Like, I appreciate that. And she says, um, the beginning was a little strange, but when you started talking, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot what she said after. But basically acknowledging that, you know, he, he he's doing okay now. Rough start because he's a little weird, but he's okay. Again, reassuring him. I swear, women reassure men all the time the way we wish men would reassure us. God, like, me feels uncomfortable. Again, and I love her response here. Well, welcome to the party. You're all uncomfortable. You finally arrived. And, you know, I, I and this is why, like, I really... God, I wish women, I would, like, I know why she's doing this, but the problem is that she doesn't know that this man's a psychopath, and now he's like, that one. I've got her. I, th- I honestly, the person that I'm, I think, the most attached to on this show that I care the most about, that I get the most angry about is AD, because I feel like she really, really wants to break out, break out of the cycle. And it sounds like she had a bad relationship with her dad. Hello, I can relate to that. And that she's been working on herself to break that cycle so that she doesn't keep dating the same dude. And like she's well on her way and love is blind, but this psychopath who is so good at manipulating women and literally scanning them for all of the parts that they could then weaponize and use against them. And that's what they did to her. And I, it, uh, even said, I feel like you're going to shock me. This, there's a few times where she literally states out loud, like what I believe her intuition is telling her, but she doesn't want to be too judgmental. Like a lot of us, right? She wants to be open. She doesn't, you know what I mean? Like she's trying to have an open mind. Literally why all of them allegedly are on this show, but very few of them are actually on there for that. And this right here, this man is all words but no action. And why is there no action? Because he's stringing, he's, he's saying all the right things to get her to like him and then, and then does this. Well, I'll likely ask you for another date. Bro, ask her for another date. This is very intentional. I like you so much. Maybe I'll call you. And then he makes you wait three days. This, this is so calculated, y'all. If he really liked her, like all of the couples that have actually worked out, which is very few. Actually, there's that, that blonde dude, what's his butt, who's obsessed with birth control. Like that to me is a big red flag. But other than that, I was like, okay, he seems to really like her. The only couple that I think might make it on this show. But I'm seriously alarmed by the whole birth control thing. Anyway, the men who really are like, this woman is, is, is special. They're just, they're, obvi- they're going to make a date. And this guy's like, maybe. This is her reaction. What the fuck is going on? If you are confused, it's probably bad. You're probably being played. Someone said something on my video the other day. There's confusion. There's disinterest or something like these men are trying to confuse us. And then right after she talks about how she's in her 30s and because of her age, 
she gets a lot of feedback about how she should date, who she should date, whatever. And any woman who's single in their 30s, we know that experience. And this is why women in their 30s, I would argue, are just as vulnerable as women in their 20s because these men prey on our feet. And the thing that I really find frustrating is that she knows, I mean, she says here that they're like, maybe you should stop dating these players. And she says that she doesn't really give the nice guy a try. And then she makes fun of herself. You know, if I see a red flag, I'm like, oh, well, I'll just paint my nails red to mad. Like, I just, I love her self-awareness, her humor, her big heart, how empathetic she is. And what I really, really, really hate is that this man may have set her back. Him and Clay may have set her back in terms of like, all the progress she was making to try to get out of this cycle of dating the men who, men who don't appreciate her and don't deserve her. Like, honestly, what Matthew did to her and the other woman, uh, Amber, that he screwed over, that level of like, you're a sociopath, I've actually had that happen more than once. And it makes me terrified of the world. And it makes you really not trust any guy who's nice because that's sometimes it's the first taste of the nice guy that makes you realize that they're actually like sometimes more terrifying than the outright player, like the fratty kind of guys, the athlete guys, like the ladies man. Because those guys are just like, and this is how she ended up with Clay because he was forthright with how he's kind of a player in the past and she ended up falling for him because of his potential and it doesn't seem like so far he's actually really ready for marriage and so Matthew may have (laughs) looked I'm so mad at Matthew (laughs) if you can't tell Matthew's a perfect example of the nice guy who mind forks you forever every I think most women who date men have been with one of these dudes and it is like a different kind of pain than any of the players and the one night stand dudes and all like whatever it's these dudes who get in your head and twist everything around that you gave them a chance because you thought they were nice these are the world Rudes. Her and Amber, I feel so bad for them. And I think that she ends up going for Matthew because like she says here, she really wants something real. And in her mind, Clay is her dating the old guys that, that you know, her not breaking this, continuing the cycle. And Matthew is like the potential for her to break this cycle. And he knew that. That's why he's so good at what he does. And what's also interesting is that All the guys um, think this man is like not trustworthy. I think it's even Clay or I can't remember who it was, but one of them would call him a sleeper. This dude is a loner. He's a psychopath. He's playing a very um, calculated game. And so he's not sharing anything with anyone on purpose. He doesn't want anyone to find out the game he's playing. And so all the other guys, one of the reasons why I, I like this show is because I usually end up really loving the friendships that develop because I think all of the like romantic relationships are trash. And so even like last season, was that last season? Whatever. Like I loved um, Brett and Tiffany's relationship, but you know what I love just as much is Brett's um, friendship with Marshall. Everybody loves a good bromance, especially when the bromance is based on like vulnerability and like men actually wanting to connect instead of it being based on like sports or beer or some stupid hobby or literally bonding over hating women which is what most of them bond over but this man is seriously this is his like uh school pew pew vibes going on in this uh, men's chamber because like trevor's like dude we gotta get in matthew's head again trevor's is like one of the only men i trust and actually some of the other men who like seemed pretty decent like they just disappeared too so i hate that a lot of times we get stuck with them (laughs) With, I don't, I I hate how this show works. Look, we got to make that motherfucker talk. (laughs) Like, they're all over there like, what is wrong with that guy? And again, I think some of them feel sorry for him. And they're actually going to make some effort. But a lot of them don't trust them. And and we're going to understand why. Johnny's like, what's with that? And and Trevor's like, doesn't he talk? He's just in his own world. So when AD comes in and tells the girls that she had a great conversation with Matthew, I love her face. (laughs) Like... Everyone's like, what? Because either A, Matthew was just insulting and just weird, or he just like didn't make any effort to talk to these women because I believe not because, you know, he is um, an introvert or, you know, neurodivergent or any of that stuff. I literally think Matt is, it, this is all calculated. Because again, I have a lot of empathy and understanding for men who have a hard time uh, communicating. That is not what, that's not what he is. He's faking it. So when AD talks about it, she was like, yeah, then I was just like, started talking to him and he opened up. 
Remember I told you that the thing that kept me in that abusive relationship, the one I looked back, the one thing that kept me there for so long was feeling needed and important because everything else was so bad. And I was literally like, my life was being threatened by this man on a regular, my peace was always threatened. I mean, it was, I was ne- never in peace around this man. And I, and I kept saying, why am I with this dude? And especially afterwards, once I was out of it, I was like, it's because I felt needed, which made me feel important. And if she got him to open up, do you have any idea how powerful that is for women who just want to feel like special? right? Who want to feel like appreciated, especially those of us who had bad relationships with our dad. This is like this. Please be careful of this. Men who are like, oh my God, I've never said this to anyone but you. Oh, no, 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 any but you. You know, you're the only one who makes me blah. Be, be very careful. Be very careful. I swear they're all reading the same book. So then she starts talking about Clay and how she thinks Clay is a ladies man. But I'm still so curious. Oh, y'all, I think some of my worst decisions is because I'm just like curious to a fault. I literally, I am like curiosity. Like, I mean, and now I get curiosity almost killed the cat. My curiosity, my empathy and curiosity and benefits of the doubt are literally what almost got me killed so many times. <laughs> just because you're curious about a guy, that doesn't mean you should just like check it out because that man, if he's really good at manipulating you, is going to use that time that you're just, you know, kind of gathering information. He's gathering information and he's already laying the foundation to manipulate the crap out of you. Any time that you give these men that you sense are probably not good for you, but you're just curious. Why not? Why not is going to get you killed, okay? And literally, like I said before, when I remember hearing my intuition, it was like a, a loud voice in my head when I got a text that was so absurd. Where I was like, God, this man sounds like a victim blamey, like, like perpetual victim, like what? And I, and I remember thinking like, I don't want to date a man who would ever send a text this bad. And then I heard that other voice. Well, what's the worst that could happen? What's the worst that could happen? I almost died. And I'm still undoing that trauma like almost 10 years later. So what I hate about this is the only two men that AD... Ha- that, that that seem, I don't know, maybe there are other men that we just didn't see because of editing. The only two men that are interested in her is a predatory red pill dude play, posing as a nice guy and an alternative to what, you know, she that he knows that she's trying to get away with, get away from, right? And then the other option is like perpetuating the cycle. Like she is in the worst situation and she knows it. She doesn't know it yet, but she will. She even describes him as like, he's kind of like a pistachio. Uh, he's got a hard shell. And if you can crack it, if you're the woman who can see his potential, then maybe it's meant to be. Nope. We're not cracking any more pistachio. These men are, tr- are they're pistachioing on purpose. Maybe we should make that a phrase. Did you get pistachioed? Like, did you get breadcrumbs? Seriously, that's what this is. If you can crack it, you get like something really nice on the inside. But here's the thing, you don't get something nice on the inside. What he did was distract her by complimenting her and saying all the things that she needed to hear and really, really wanted to hear. But he never, ever showed his soft side. He never showed anything about him that's vulnerable. And look at this, me, it's like, like allowing him to come out of his cocoon on his own, the natural way. He's like flourishing before my eyes. So this right here, and those of us who, especially like this was, you know, this is how I got in that terrible relationship. And this is how so many women are taught to be. Is like, oh, see, he's flourishing. This is our mother stuff. This is what they've taught us to be is these men's mothers. And then she's also very protective of him. When she, you know, she's asking about, and she, she admitted to him. And again, he is mining all of this to then use and weaponize against her. And all of, and he, and again, just like weaponized incompetent, this is weaponized, like awkwardness. When really he's like, oh, because she says, you know, I hope whoever Matthew's talking about, at least they're being, I hope they're being fucking nice. He's like, oh, why? She's like, because I don't know. I'm just, I'm like, you're being a little protective. Boom. And then he's going to use that as a reverse later on to make her feel momentarily protected the way so many women wish we were. And given what we know about how society and systemically and everything else that black women are the least protected people on the planet, for a black woman to hear 
that someone wants to protect her. I'm just guessing as a woman who w- would love for someone want to protect. And I actually have way more protection systemically and, and overall. That is some sort of Jedi mind trick, man. God, I hate this guy. Okay, so if, if all of that wasn't enough, Matthew also tried to get her to tell her what he looked like. But he didn't do it as, he was a little slicker about it than Clay. Which is again why she said like, well at least like Clay, we'll get into Clay in another video. But he is fishing here and she said nothing. So what did he do? He was like, I suck at dating. Again, I I suck at dating, I suck at talking, I suck at everything. I'm a little boy, hell. And then he does it again. I just was like trying to like think of how to tell you that like you make me so nervous but comfortable at the same time. And she's like, um, I think you just found the perfect way to say that. So again, he's playing stupid. She is like, I don't understand why he thinks he's bad at this. Basically, no, you said it perfectly validating him, right? Because that's what women do. We validate. Then he does this. Again, what I told you, whatever men are volunteering to say, they're, why are they saying this? Oh, I, I'm not saying to you. Well, what I'm saying to you, I'm not saying to anybody else. First of all, she didn't ask, but she's like, well, that's reassuring. Again, he knows that he not only says the thing for no reason, he then gets to hear her say, well, that's reassuring, right? Which then gives him more information like, okay, I need to reassure her a lot. She tells him, you know, that when she gets coy, when she talks to him, now he knows that he's disarming her. I swear this man's such a predator. He's like, what are you trying to figure out how a city girl could like a country boy? And by the way, which she ends up asking about later on, um, yeah, that's a legit concern for a, a woman from a northern city to date a man from the south, a white man from the south who comes from a little town of 600 people. Like, how's that going to work out? She has safety issues to consider. You know, there's still like sundown towns in the south. It's just a different place. And if you're not in the city, a big city, and you're in a little town, like who the population of that town is really important. If this is a town of 600 people and it's all white people. That's going to be uh, probably very scary for her. But of course, he's not thinking about that. So just really quick, because I'm actually going to make up this like break this video up. I think one of the reasons why AD is getting played so bad is because the other guy that she liked is Clay, who admits that, you know, his dad was one of the smoothest guys. This is who she feels the connection with. This is the guy that reminds her of, her, of like the old, the guys she used to date that did not treat her well, that were players and athletes and all that stuff. This guy, you know, Clay looks up to his dad and we learn later on that his dad cheated on his mom constantly and took Clay along with him to cheat. And then he never told his mom. Like when I found that information out, like, sorry, a uh, spoiler alert, she said that. When I found that, I was like, oh, because this man has, made, has admitted so many times that he's never, he doesn't know any man who hasn't cheated. Any of the heroes that he looks up to. And he even used like celebrities with terrible marriages that involve cheating to justify, like, oh, but yeah, he, he, he like seems to worship his dad. Admits to being a player. You know, it felt like as a man, I should probably emulate what you look up to most, which is his dad. His dad is a cheater, like he tells us later on. And then he says his ego is really very huge. Y'all, like that to me, I like a man with a big ego is a very insecure man. Because a man with a big ego can't take criticism, can't take feedback, um, takes things personally. Like, honestly, I think that's... Uh, I think every human being like dealing with the ego is our thing. But for men, their ego, a lot of times is really tied to... Um, patriarchy, toxic masculinity. And he brags about being smooth and, and you know, having the suaveness. And then he says this, and this, I think, the only reason why I'm talking about Clay now, because, you know, again, like there, there's, I don't know. I don't know if y'all want like a video on all of these people. This is like, like a lot of work. Um, and I don't know if this interests you or not. So let me know. And also as a white woman, I'm going to miss a whole lot of nuance and context and not understand everything entirely. So a lot of this is actually just me projecting my own experiences on dating men, although obviously mine are limited. But what we know is that she does not want to be with men who were players and she really, she's here because she wants someone to love her for her, for herself and not for her look. So for this man to then say, basically, I want to, <laughs> I'm into like, you know, into petite girl, you know, my favorite attributes, lips butt and all that stuff and you know that sounds sh- oh, shallow and all but what basically he wants he's asking her to tell him 
what he, what she looks like. If I'm going to propose, that's something I need to know, which literally goes against the whole premise of Love is Blind. Do you remember um, Shake? Like, it, it, Shake is the first one that comes to mind. But, oh, Shake did not deserve her. Um, Shake did this too. So, like, if you were an athlete, I forget how he did it. But, I mean, at least, at least Clay is more just direct and honest about it. Some of these guys try to trick women into telling them what they look like. And I'm sure some of the women do too. But he just flat out says, like, I need to know if you're, <laughs> if you're my type, if you're pretty, if I'm going to like what you look like before I propose. Which literally goes against the whole premise of this show. And he even says, regardless of the emotional connection. And she's like so disappointed by this as as I as anyone would be, I would think, who came here in good faith. She's like, you want to know? Like, she's so pissed that he asked this. What do you mean, tell you what I look like? That's not what we're here for. And I love what she says to him. I personally don't want to sell myself based off of physical attributes. That, to me, defeats the purpose. So she talks later on about how she's really struggling with what to sacrifice and what to compromise for, or put compromise on. And I think this is very relatable. But honestly, at this point, knowing how psycho so many of these men are, like Matthew, and just how much men exploit us and use us and marry us, even though they hate us, I would say women need to stick on the side of sacrificing nothing. Nothing. And compromising some but not a whole lot because men are expecting us to sacrifice everything and compromise everything. So if we need to do a hard re uno reverso and then kind of come back to the middle a little bit, honestly, I'd rather we all overcorrect than keep doing what we're doing, which is just letting these men exploit our, our, what we've been taught, which is to sacrifice and compromise. Marriage is about sacrifice. Marriage is about cut for who? For who? Those vows are not for men. They're for us. All these like, you know, marriage is hard. No, it, it, it's not. Life is hard. Marriage shouldn't be hard. That whole marriage is hard thing, that's so that women stay in terrible relationships. She even says, like, maybe I should, you know, should just tell them what I look like to get over with. But I don't want to tell it. And I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to tell it. I love this. I swear, I would have loved to have seen what would happen to AD if she hadn't <laughs> had these two men. Like, I wish... I don't know, maybe maybe there were like actually like men who really would have cherished her and maybe they didn't pass her filter test. But I hate that the two men that are interested in her that we know about, like, it's like her past and her only option out of her past is a psycho posing as a nice guy. I want someone to want me for who I am on the inside, especially. And then we learn later on just how hard she works out you know she watch she counts calories she goes to the gym she's very disciplined like she works really hard to look good because it's important to her as it is for many women most women i mean our looks like it's social capital and what i love is that she's here because she wants a man to love her for who she is like all of us want that are not judging the outside and then on this show the one guy she hooks up with is, is who, who she ends up getting engaged to tells her basically like if you get, you know, if you gain weight, I'm going to make you go to the gym and I'm going to push you and I'm going to be mean and I'm going to make sure, you know, she's like, well, if I have babies, like mm, I'm not always going to maybe look like this. I'll make sure you don't like Clay, right? So we got Clay who's obsessed with her looks before he even meets her. And then he ends up like trying to feed her a lot of food. Be like, well, you're worried about calories. And she, that's where we find out that she worries. She watches her weight. She works. She was like, it takes a lot of work to look like this which it does she's such a beautiful body and she clearly uh works out a lot and she's talked about it and that's why and she watches her calories and he's like just eat whatever and then also if you but if you gain weight from eating whatever or having my babies i'm gonna make you lose all that weight like the the oh the men are so mean I mean, she calls him out on that uh and again i can go over that in another video if you want but given all of this context of her Really kind of being hurt and disappointed by Clay is being like, I don't care how emotionally connected we are. If you're not pretty, I don't want you, basically. And so then she goes up, like, from this place, she goes back to talk to Ma Matthew, and then Matthew mm, weaponizes all this against her. And of course, Matthew's like, oh, I'm sure you have a connection with a lot of guys. Well, actually, just one. He's the one, again, him saying this is like him telling on himself. He's actually working more than one woman. She thinks she's the only one, of course. Oh, you because know, you're amazing. And, and, and uh, you know, I'm a little jealous, but I understand. And then he says this again. Oh, God. You want the guy that's going to be the center of attention at parties, Clay. Like, he knows what he, y'all, he's like a spy. He knows what's going on. Clay doesn't know he's competing with Matthew, but I guarantee Matthew knows he's competing with Clay. Everything he's saying here is about Clay, I know you want the guys, that the, you know, funny guy, the guy everyone likes. That's probably not going to be. There's a lot of people that do that. 
A lot of women are attracted to it, but long term, I think guys like me win more. You know, the underdog, the Superman, the nice guy. Nice guys always finish last, but let's prove them wrong, baby. And then when she ta- admits that she's been thinking about him a lot, Are you just saying that? (laughs) Again, projection. He's like, no, I'm not the type that just says anything. He's like, oh, okay. So part two of Matthew is terrifying. If y'all want it, we're going to get into all the lies.